I just got a brand new scope mounted to my rifle, and I went through the steps to set it up to make sure it fits me properly. Now I need to zero it. Hi, I'm Ryan Kleckner with the National Shooting Sports Foundation. In this video, we're going to talk about how to zero your scope to your rifle. Now, when I say zero, I'm meaning nothing more than taking the point of aim inside the scope and making it match the point of impact downrange at a certain distance. Now, that at a certain distance is important. Just like when we covered minutes of angle earlier, we talked about a minute of angle is only a certain size at that distance. Well, the likewise is true with zeroing. You see, I like to zero my rifles at 100 yards. You might choose to zero them at 200 yards. Well, if we both shoot our zeroed rifles at a 100 yard target, our impacts are going to be different. But that's okay. It's not that your rifle isn't zeroed, it's just that your rifle is zeroed at 200 yards. Now, once we have that set up, we can then use that as a baseline in the future to make adjustments for different distances. So instead of sitting here at the 100 yard line and wasting ammunition and time trying to get it close, there's a couple tricks we can use. First, we can bore sight the scope to the rifle, and second, we can shoot at the 25 yard line to make sure we're at least close enough on paper. I have my gear set up at the 25 yard line. We're gonna go try both. First thing I'm gonna do is bore sight my scope to my rifle. Now by bore sighting it, you're literally looking through the bore of the rifle and making sure the scope is aiming at the same spot. Now this is of course easier with a bolt action rifle because I can just pull the bolt. If you have a semi-automatic rifle, you're in luck if it's a style where you can take the bolt out and do the same thing. So let's say you have an MSR, an AR style rifle. You can take the upper receiver out of the lower, pull the bolt out and you can still see through the barrel and adjust the scope. So after I take these out, I want to make sure I'm on a nice stable position because it's not going to do me any good to have the rifle moving around. I like to shoot off of a bag. Bipod legs are nice to hold the rifle, but I get more consistent results off of a bag. And in the back of the rifle for support, I use a sand sock. Now a sand sock is what it sounds like. It's a sock filled with sand. It's a nice piece that I can squeeze at different tensions to get higher or lower on the back. It's a nice rest for the rifle and it really helps in this process. So what I do is I back down the rifle to where I can look through the barrel. I get the rifle as stable as I can, looking at a certain spot on the target. Now I alternate back and forth between looking through the barrel that's lined up at a certain spot and up to the scope. And I can go back and forth to see how much of an adjustment I need to make so that the crosshairs are where the barrel's pointed at. It looks like I have quite a bit to go here. That looks good on elevation. Now for windage, I got a ways to go. Well, that looks close enough. But the good news is we're at the 25 yard line anyway, so we're likely at least gonna be on paper. And as long as we're on paper, we can go up and measure where our impacts are and make the appropriate adjustments in our scope. Let me get this back on and we'll take it. Let's go see where that impact was and make any adjustments if need be. Well, all right, that's not bad. That shot is about a half inch away where I intended it to be, which means the scope is pretty close. Now, I'm not gonna make adjustments now though. One reason is I just took one shot, I didn't shoot a group, and you always wanna shoot with a group when you're making adjustments. The idea is if you make a mistake and flinch on one shot or pull one shot one way or the other, and you try to adjust off of that, you'll be chasing rounds all over the target all day. You need to shoot a good, consistent group first, then adjust off the center of the group. The good news is when it's this close, I know at least I'm gonna be on paper at 100, and I'm gonna be able to make some good adjustments there. We're back at the 100 yard line, and now we're gonna shoot a group that we can adjust off of. It's important that this is a good group. So now that I'm set in a stable position, I'm gonna take a few chances here to dry fire and make sure that my trigger control feels good and everything is set to go before I start sitting rounds down range. Okay, those felt nice and stable. I'm gonna go ahead and start sending rounds down range, shoot that nice group, and make any adjustments I need to make. It's important that when you're doing this, you're honest with yourself. If you don't feel stable, or if you don't feel that your trigger control is exactly where it needs to be, keep practicing. It's gonna save you some time and some ammunition.
All right, we just shot a three round group. Let's go see how we did and make any adjustments we might need to make. All right, well, that's not bad. I'm gonna be happy with any group that's under a minute of angle. And let's revisit minutes for a second. A minute of angle ends up being about an inch at 100 yards. So these squares on this paper are one inch squares. So any group I shoot that's smaller than one of those squares is gonna be a good enough, good enough group to adjust off of. Well, it looks like from here, I'm gonna to need to come down and to the right, but how much is the key? I have a scope that adjusts in quarter minute adjustments so we can get pretty precise here. If I take the center of the group, I need to come down one, two and a half minutes of angle. And I need to come over to the right a little over one. We can call that one and a quarter minutes of angle. So down two and a half, and over one and a quarter will get us where we need to be. Now, we didn't adjust off that 25 yard shot that we shot before, but if we did, this result would still make sense. If you remember, I said I wanted to be about an inch low at 25 yards. Well, at 25 yards, a minute of angle is a lot smaller. Matter of fact, it's only a quarter of an inch. So one of my advice or my, my tips from before was to think in the size chunks that a minute of angle is. So if you think in quarter inch chunks, we can measure the same thing it looks like it's just under three minutes too high and a little over one minute too far to the left. Exactly the same result we see here. Now it's time to make our adjustments. This scope adjusts one quarter minute per click. So for every four clicks, that's one minute of angle, which means for us to come down our two and a half minutes, we need to come down 10 clicks. Two, three, four, that's one minute. That's two minutes. That's down two and a half minutes. Now we need to adjust right one and a quarter. It's gonna be five clicks. Five clicks to the right. Let's see what that does for our group. All right, group looks good, the adjustments worked. Now that the scope is zeroed, we're gonna slip the scales. By slipping the scales, what I mean is adjusting the turrets so that the zero on the turret actually lines up with this mark in the front so it's truly zeroed for next time. Now to do this, on this particular scope, we're going to adjust these turrets by unscrewing these little Allen screws at the top of the turret cap. By doing this, the turret cap loosens up and now becomes separate from the adjustment inside. You see, the post inside only turns when this is tightened down to grab it. Now that I've loosened these screws, I can turn this cap and you don't hear any clicks because no adjustments are being made. You need to be careful here that when you loosen them, when you first start turning, if you hear it click, pay attention because that means you're making adjustments. So what I'll do is I'll line this up so the zero is on the front and then I'll come in and snug these back down. Do not over tighten these little screws. They're small, they can easily strip. And if these things strip so this, the cap doesn't hold tight, you're really gonna be in trouble when you try and make adjustments later. Okay, that one's good. Now let's do the windage. Okay, now the scales are slipped and both the elevation and the windage turret line up with the zero in the front. This way, if we make adjustments in the future, it's easy to come back to the scope's true zero just by turning back to the turret's zero. Now, you can run into problems in the future if one of these comes loose. If you're in the middle of making an adjustment, it comes loose and spins on you, you might not know exactly where you're at, so it's gonna be hard to come back to the zero. So what I like to do is have what I call the mechanical zero. The mechanical zero is how far we can turn one turret to where the scope mechanically stops us, and then we count back from that so we know what, where the true zero of the scope is. Now, a scope like this comes with some shims where you can actually put underneath the turret, which are handy because they allow the turret only to go down so far. They act like a zero stop, which stops the actual turret inside, not just the turret cap. And even scopes that have a zero stop on the turret cap, it's only so good as long as the turret never slipped on you. So let's check out the mechanical zero. I'm gonna go up and count in full revolutions until it stops me. One revolution up, two, three, four, five, oh, not quite past five. So each revolution of this turret was 12 minutes. So five times the 12 minutes is 60 minutes plus a half. So I'm gonna write down that 
60 and a half minutes down from the absolute top is my actual zero, because that's what we need to come down. There's the half minute down, and I'm gonna come down 60. One revolution, two, three, four, and five. Now we're back to the scope's true zero. This means if I ever have troubles with this turret in the future, all I need to do is adjust to the scope's so top limit and count down 60 and a half minutes of angle. I would repeat the same process for the windage so I know that mechanical zero too. And that's it. You now know how to zero your scope. You should head out to the range and try it for yourself. Are you looking for a place to shoot? Check out our website, wheretoshoot.org. And remember, while you're out there, firearm safety depends on you.